Welcome to Laughter Permitted. I'm Julie Foudy. I'm Lynn Ozawi. Last week, we launched season nine by talking with NASA astronaut Nicole Mann while she was literally in space. And we're happy to report she's back safely on planet Earth. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> and then the question became, well, how in the heck do we follow that up? Well, we decided to go with a woman whose career is, wait for it, blasting off. <laughs> Our guest is U.S. Women's National Team and San Diego Wave player, Naomi Gurma. Well played, Len. Well played. <laughs> Naomi is a graduate of the fine institution of Stanford University, where she won a national title in 2019 and then went on to earn her first cap with the U.S. women's national team last April. She was the number one draft pick in the 2022 NWSL draft and is the first player to earn both Rookie of the Year and Defender of the Year honors in the same year. Again, her first year. Yes. You'll hear how Naomi had a unique introduction to the game of soccer thanks to her dad, who started a league with members of the Ethiopian community in the Bay Area where they lived. Naomi is indeed a star on the rise. Just ask Megan Rapino. We talk about that, of course. So get comfortable listening. It's Naomi Gurma. Kick back. So bright, talking and laughing combined. Feeling alright, get comfortable listening. It's laughter permitted. Uh, did you notice, uh, Jules, did you notice Naomi's amazing aura ring? Do you have one? Do you have one too? Julie really wants to get one. They gave us them from at camp. Oh, I, I had a conversation with Vladko about him. Oh, really? I am not. I forgot to tell you that, Lynn. You don't like them? No. no. Why? Because I don't want to know that I didn't effing sleep last night. I'm good. I know that. I don't yeah. need a ring to tell me I didn't sleep very well. I feel the one thing that's nice is like sometimes I'm like, okay, I need like this many hours to feel rested. But like I'll wake up and I'm like, oh, I feel good today. And like I didn't actually sleep that long. So like I feel like I, I thought I needed more than I actually did. You uh -huh. know? Yeah, that's like I feel like that's nice, but other than that, it'll tell, I'll like I'll like finish training and it'll be like you haven't done enough activity today, and I'm like, how are you gonna tell me that? I was, I was like dying at training. See, <laughs> see, the aura ring is not all aura aura knowing. No, that's a, so we had this whole thing last season where I talked about my ring. So now it's made it. I didn't know it's made it to the national team. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Gonna get you one, Jules. Nope. I told her it's going down the toilet if she bit, if she buys it. Just like do a month a month trial. Yeah, <sighs> do a month trial. <laughs> <laughs> that was a slight no. No. All right. Are we good, Lynn? Mm hmm. We should do this. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Nail me. Thanks for joining us in the middle yeah. of like all the craziness of preseason and everything. So thank you, my friend. Thank you. Um, the first thing we always do on the podcast is we have our guests set the scene. Mm -hmm. So where you're at, what you're doing, all those good things. What kind of coffee you're chugging right now? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm in San Diego. I'm in my apartment. Um I actually like make my dad this is like you're on the side of my bed but i make it look like i'm sitting at a desk <laughs> <laughs> that would be that's such really? an honest scene set professional so appreciate that <laughs> just so you can really like see get this you know where i am <laughs> it's like raining today which is like huge bummer so it's worked yeah. out like i'm happy to be inside Aww. um and i just got phil's <gasps> Oh my, my god, I pop. just discovered Phil's the other you day. You like it? Yes. It's like my favorite. Oh my gosh, but yeah. we don't have any near my little hometown of San Clemente. Uh, um, but they're like, there's a bunch in the Bay. I, I don't know if it started there. Yeah, that might be wrong. I think but it like, did. I, I used to go, at, there's a, like two in Palo Alto, so I'd go yeah. at Stanford all the time. So 
I'm drinking my ice to static from Phil's. Oh, um, that's so funny because um, someone was like, you don't know what Phil's is? Come on, you you went to school in the Bay? I know. You don't know? I was like, I don't think they had them back then. <laughs> no, they there weren't really even any in San Jose until like pretty recently. Okay. So yeah, yeah I have my Phil's. That's where I'm at. So we always often debate how we want to start a podcast. Mm-hmm. Naomi and um, Lynn and I talk over it and you know, we could have gone a million ways with yours, but then we saw the Megan Rapino quote. We were like, oh, well, there we go. That's it. I know you've seen the quote on one Naomi Gurma, as in the Naomi Gurma sitting next to us from Megan Rapino. Have you heard of her? Rapino? Megan. 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 What was last? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of her. <laughs> okay, you've heard of her. All right. So here's the quote. This is just a couple weeks ago at the She Believes Cup. I don't think, and this isn't word for word. I tightened it up just a little bit. Okay. Uh, I don't think you can leave Naomi off the field. She is calm, extremely smart, deceptively quick. She can play any kind of ball. She's a great leader. She's just fucking good. It's so <laughs> tough to step into this team at this level and be a no-brainer to start. The impact was immediate with her. She's going to be the future of this team for a long time. Bye! <laughs> I mean, high praise from one of the goats herself. Oh my gosh, I know. Come on. Yeah. What did you do when you read that? I was like, that's crazy. That <laughs> my friend sent it to me. I I looked at it. I was like, what? Like, I mean, I didn't know what to say. I was I was literally like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's so nice of her that she thinks that about me. You know. I would call my mom right away and be like, "Mom, mom, guess what? Did she you call? <laughs> did you call? Did you call your folks? Uh, so no, your daughter's I, don't, I, don't, I actually shit. don't know if they've seen it because they're not really like on social media. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even told them. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was obviously that's like such high praise, especially coming from someone like Pino. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think like going in the national team, like you want the coaches approval and you want them to believe in you but like just as much you want the team and like the older players to like believe in you and you know give you that like stamp of approval so that felt good how is it all going i mean you you just debuted in 2022 yeah in april so you haven't even been you know with the senior team for i know you've been with a lot of the youth national teams but Mm -hmm. it is it's it is like as megan pointed out it's a hard transition to make regardless yeah. of whether you played on youth national teams or collegiately or anything like it's a big step yeah it's a different level like all around I mean it's going I think it's going well I think I feel more confident comfortable like in the environment and I think that's like just like going into camp and then also training because I feel like there's like so much that happens like when you're not on the field and like feeling like yourself there is almost just as important. Um, So I think like kind of being more integrated in with the group has helped me feel better on the field and like feel like I can be myself and like Mm -hmm. try things, make mistakes. Um, Yeah, I think that's helped me a lot. Yeah, I've never really thought of it like that on the national team where you come in and you've got all of these established stars and you yourself are trying to find your identity Mm -hmm. in the mix. How, how do you find your comfort level then? Or how does that come to fruition? Yeah, I mean, I think it's you, it, like you slowly build it up. Like I, like in my first camp, like I was probably like so quiet and like not talking that much. Um, and just like, you know, keep your head down, work hard on the field. And yeah, then you like get to build those like relationships with all the players. And um, I think it just makes camp more enjoyable, obviously, when you're like friends with people and like can hang out. So I think, I mean, I think also for me, the, it helped to have like Sophia Smith, Ashley Sanchez, um, Emily Fox, just like players who I knew. And then like some older ones, like Alana Cook, um, you know, just like people I was familiar with and who could kind of like bring me into the team. Um, I think that helped me a lot just like with that, that transition um, and like it, being able to like be myself in that environment. It also helps when half the team is from Stanford now. I mean, that's... Like, oh, did you go to Stanford? Oh, oh my... weird. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with the Stanford takeover? I mean, we're just know. awesome. What do you mean? You don't know. Yes, we know. We're awesome. Yeah, we're you know just I mean? great. Like... <laughs> 
it's taking too long, but okay, we're there. Yeah, we've got to, we've got to keep it there now. There was this other school that I heard of called like I think University of North <laughs> Carolina North. or something like that. That was pretty good for a while. Yeah, no, I haven't heard of it. I haven't heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of a Tar Heel and a very well-known one at that, not not Mia Hamm, but Cindy Parlocone. We had her on the podcast, and I asked her a question about the 99ers and just asking for any story, basically, and maybe something about leadership or something she learned that she applies in being a leader. And she talked about being young on the team and seeing Julie and Carla and what they did and just by learning by watching them mm-hmm. and observing. So I'm really curious, what are you learning by just observing Alex Morgan, Megan Rapino, Becky Sauerbrunn, Kelly O'Hara? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think I feel like I'm so lucky that I get to be with Alex like in our club environment. And um, I think one of the things that stood out to me, like, right away like obviously the training level like the hard work but also just like how much they take ownership of like the standards off the field for their team even if it's like not directly affecting them and i think like that's what Mm. has made them such great leaders like throughout their whole career and like now i think like they're i mean they're just whenever they leave the game they're leaving it in such a better place than how they found it and I think um, it's pretty cool to see, like, even after, like, okay, they've got equal pay, the CBAs are through, but it's still, like, if one thing isn't being met, like, they're going to say something about it. And I think um, just kind of learning from them that, like, it's not, like, you're not asking for too much, like, you're not being snobby, like, mm. you're asking, you're, like, you're demanding what you deserve. And um, I think just, like, leaving college and understanding that and, like, now, like, taking in a role with a national team, like that's going to be something that I'm going to be expected to do and something I want to do for other players too. So I think Pino, Becky, Alex, Alyssa, Crystal, like all of them are just like, they just take ownership over it. And it's not like you need to ask. It's like, if they see it, they're going to get it done. So I think, um, wow. yeah, just like, and then obviously there's everything on the field about like the intensity, the work rate, like day in and day out and just like what it takes to be great and like how they've, they're kind of showing that to the younger players. But um, yeah, I think that's been one of my biggest learnings from them. Hmm. I know. I th- I don't think you realize it until later. You're, you seem to be realizing it in the moment, but I didn't realize it till later that um, being surrounded by all these amazing women mm-hmm. is such a gift in itself that you, you are soaking in just all beyond, you know, the knowledge of the game Um but you're just soaking in all these life lessons and, and to your point on like how to behave in these situations and how to act. And I think a lot of times we women often default to, no, I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to stir the pot. Yeah. I'm not going to bug mm-hmm. people. I don't, you know, yeah. I don't want to do that. I want to be respectful, right? I'm young. I'm coming in. And I do love this younger generation of kind of being like, no, that. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it because I want, you know, because it's not right. Yeah. Um, which I think is fantastic that they're teaching you that already and you're seeing it. Yeah. I mean, I think us having that moving forward will only be better for women's soccer and where the standard will be. So it's exciting. Uh, can Can I just comment on one thing too with the San Diego Wave? I mean, mm-hmm. the fact that you come in when your first season in NWSL, I mean, this is mm-hmm. 2022 again as well. First season at NWSL, and you don't just win Rookie of the Year, you win Defender of the Year as well. You're on an expansion team that almost wins the NWSL title in its very first year with San Diego. I mean, that's a pretty damn good year for you, sister. (laughs) Thank you. Um, Yeah, I mean, it was a good year. Um, I feel like it was just us, like, like, no one, no one expected that from us. And like, it would have probably, like, I mean, we could have, come in last people would have been like oh yeah they're an expansion team like and I think we kind of like threw that away from the start and kind of came in being like yeah we're an expansion team but like who cares like we're gonna go try to win this thing um (laughs) and like just like within our group we were like we're not just like gonna be like oh it's okay like if stuff goes wrong it was like no we're like demanding like Mm. the best for ourselves so I think like setting that from day one like helped me too because I'm like okay like yeah I'm a rookie but like that doesn't mean I can't like go ball out and like 
just like play my game, have a good season. And I think like all around we were like kind of underdogs and kind of used that to our advantage. Oh, you balled out. That's for sure. <laughs> Doesn't mean I can't ball out. <laughs> you went full ball out this entire 2022. It's going full baller. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the beginning of your balling out. What's your okay. origin story when it comes to soccer? How was it introduced into your life? Yeah, um, origin story. I, it was introduced in San Jose. I started playing at Malada Soccer. Both my parents are from Ethiopia, um, came to the U.S., and we had like this community in the Bay. Malada Soccer was pretty much a way for like the kids to get together, have a community, and then the parents like to also like kind of have that like bonding experience so we would get together on Saturdays at like some park we would bounce around San Jose my favorite thing about it is like it was we were literally split into like big medium and little kids like that was <laughs> no ages I like, just I size like, I need to make the medium kids like I have to make- <laughs> I need to get bigger. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just like, it was so fun. And I don't know if anyone else is still playing. Like, people really didn't like it that much. Like, I think I was like one of the only ones really having fun playing. <laughs> but it was like, we would go to the playground after, we would have a barbecue. Like, it was just like the most like low stakes, low pressure introduction, like that. Mm. Like, I feel mm. like you could have. Like, um, I never played rec or anything, or like AYSO. And then I just like would keep going to Malada every Saturday and it was like my favorite part of the week. Um, and then, um, yeah, I would go to the YMCA after school cause my parents were both working and couldn't pick us up. So one of my best friends um, was on a comp- like a competitive team. Um, and this was like, I think in third grade. And so like one day she was like, you should just come. So I was like, okay. Um, and like Aww. I had been begging my mom to like get me on a team, but she was like, I don't know like what like I don't know how to do that like I don't know where I get you on a team like how does that work and I'm like I don't know <laughs> I'm just find gonna out work. mom yeah <laughs> um so I went with her and that ended up being my club team until like I was like 16 years old I like oh, started wow. on the lowest team I was like hmm. literally I don't know I was like I was number 71 like like and I wore that number until I was like 16. <laughs> what a great soccer number. I know, right? <laughs> um, yeah, like um and, That doesn't happen nowadays yeah, though, right? Yeah. Like everyone's jumping yeah. from team to team. Yeah. I love to hear that cuz you yeah, just I'm, you don't hear that anymore. I didn't even want to move like I was on the lowest team like and I didn't even want to move to the top team, like, in the club. I was like, I want to stay with my friends. Like, I'm having fun. Oh, um, oh that says it all. I ended up moving, and um, I played, like, I did ODP. I, like, Discovery played for Force um, I, when I started getting in with, like, the youth national teams. Cause they're, but, like, another big thing was, like, they were, like, paying like I we didn't have to pay once I got a little older but like if I was gonna go to ECNL it was so expensive Mm. and like my parents were like we can't afford that it was like really expensive there were like a bunch of trips and like it was like so they I ended up like discovery playing so that I could still like play at that level but Mm. like and like get to train with them and like that was like I was playing up with like it was like Tierna Davidson Mm. Sam Tran Luca Deza like that that was the team they were like they were so legit i was like oh my god (laughs) but oh that's uh, interesting so that's how you got out of because because your family couldn't afford it which is it's just so sad right like because again we're like at least you were able to play at that level by discovering up but yeah think how many people didn't figure that out right yeah there's so many like so many little things that like i feel like i got so lucky that it worked out like i like went i tried out for odp and like, I had no idea what that was. My club coach just happened to know and like made all of us go. And then I pl- ended up playing for like the regional team. And then I got scouted for like youth national teams and college. And like, yeah. eventually it's how, but like, I don't think if I was just playing for my club team, like Stanford would have been mm. at any of my games. Yeah. So yeah. Wait, it's like, go back, go back to the Malata soccer club. Cause mm-hmm. that was founded. That, that means Dawn, right? In, yeah. In the, uh, again, your language, I'm, I'm sorry. Amharic, yeah. yeah. Amharic. Yeah. I asked you that before. Um and dad and your dad started that. Yeah. Like he play, he was a big soccer player? Yes. What tell me about your parents. Like wh- yeah. why they chose to come to the United States and all that. Yeah. So my mom came um for school. 
um, she, I think she did her undergrad in um, Ethiopia, in Addis Ababa, which is the capital where she's from, and then um, came here for her master's. And then my dad left, um, he was like fighting against the government, um, it was like dictatorship, and um, with like this like youth group, and um, they ended up like going to Sudan and then he like um was a refugee and came to San Francisco but he came like he hadn't finished high school he like didn't really speak English and like ended up getting his bachelor's and he was an electrical engineer um so like school was like a very big thing like it was always like if you're like school over soccer like no matter what Mm -hmm. so um yeah I think he like um he came here and like my dad he's did something called Ethio Village where they would like spawn I think they would like they would like build schools in Ethiopia. So like he was like really like involved in like wanting to get back. Um and then Malada soccer really started because like my brother wanted to play. He I have an older brother, he's two and a half years older. And so like they were like, let's get the kids together and like there's like a bunch of there's a lot of like a lot of people came to the bay. So there's like a lot of kids who are like first generation like me and my brother. Um so like Ethiopian. they're Ethiopian yeah so there's like a big group of us there's like the Ethiopian church and so it was like Ethiopian church and like Malada that's where that's where you'd see everyone (laughs) Um, and so it started for my brother and then so like by the time I was like able to run around I was like thrown in with the little kids um, (laughs) and just kind of went from there when when you see the diversity of this U.S. national team, of today's mm-hmm. U.S. national team, because it's mm-hmm. very different, of course, than our version way mm-hmm. back. But what does that mean to you personally? And what does it say to you as well about the development of soccer in this country? Yeah, I think it's like, I mean, it's so incredible. Um, I think it's like, I think it just shows like, okay, there are some steps being taken. Like it's like kind of moving in the right direction where like when we were kids, like, we stayed in you know and like we were able to keep playing and like um i just think hopefully like that trend keeps going in the same direction there's more access and like um kids are able to like keep i mean girls are like staying in and like don't feel like they're being pushed out earlier than like they want to be Mm -hmm. um but yeah i think it's like for me it's really cool to be a part of like this generation where there's like for the first time there's like a lot of us who have like who have kept playing and are making it and like hopefully are inspiring younger girls to want to do the same and like um, see themselves in our shoes. Mm. I love it. I look and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it was always so white. I mean, it, it is still so white, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like, like, yeah, I mean, it's hard. I mean, and it's hard when you're a young black girl and you're like, I don't see myself there. Because yeah. How would you, you know? Um, yeah. And like, I just hope, hope, I mean, I think like you see it kind of in youth national teams and like everything, like it's like, hopefully it was like recruiting and everything. It's like starting to mm-hmm. become more accessible. Um, but it's like hard. Cause it's like, I feel like it's like, I mean, youth soccer, but it's also just like youth sports in general. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's just, I feel like there's such a high barrier to entry. Cause like you need to be able to pay. For, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah. That makes your story so I think unique at this kind of point in youth sports, where you didn't go that traditional route of traveling right. around the country weekends away. That you you were able to find this find this path where you still love. You were there for the love of the game. Was it kind of brings to mind? Was there you talked about sort of these maybe lucky moments, but was there something that? where it really took off, where maybe you learned what the national team was, or there was someone who said to you, you have potential, you need to, you need to stick with this. Yeah. I think people would always kind of tell me I was good, but like, I always thought like, okay, yeah, I'm good for like this, where I'm at, like, oh, at Malada, I was like one of the best players, but like, okay, everyone hated soccer. Like, I'm like, great. Like, <laughs> I'm glad. Like, thank you. <laughs> And then I would like go to club and like, it was like, we were a smaller club. So I was like, I was never really sure how I would compare like at a big, like once it got bigger, 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 when I, once I started to learn that there were like other avenues, like that other good competitive girls were taking. So I think, but I think like probably for me, it was, um, I got my like invite to my first camp. I'll like, I'll never forget this. It's like, it's, (laughs) 
It was for U14 girls camp. And like I had a game that day and my mom was coming in my room to wake me up. And she was like, Naomi, like I just got an email. Like, but I don't think this is real. Like, and it was, like we literally thought like they were trying to steal me or something. And then like, and then like I went to my game. Like when we literally like I woke up. I was like, oh okay, like breakfast. Like went to my game and then like my mom showed it to like our team mom, like one of the other parents, and she was like, no, Naomi got invited to the national team. <laughs> what? Like how did this happen? Like, <laughs> And like it was, it's just like me and my mom will still laugh about it because we're like, remember when we thought like I was getting kidnapped or so like I don't know what we thought was happening. Like they're like, come to Florida. Like she was like, I'm not I was barely allowed to have sleepovers. You're like <laughs> from that thing called U.S. soccer. What yeah. is that? She's like, what? <laughs> um, but yeah, that was like that was it's so funny. We're like, I'm like, what if I just didn't go? Because like. <laughs> Oh my God, but, thank God she showed the email to the team mom. I know, to someone else. <laughs> but we, like, it was just, like, it was so crazy to us that, like, we didn't think it was real. Um, wow. I didn't know much about the youth system then. Um, obviously, I knew, like, the national team, but I didn't know, like, oh, there's U17 World Cup, there's U20 World Cup. Um, and so, yeah, I think going to my first camp, like, that was, like, a big, like, whoa, like, just, like, it was just, it was, like, crazy. And, like, getting my invite was just, like, it's, like, the funniest. Like, I don't think I've told that story that much because I'm, like, that's a bad mom. <laughs> that's not good from us. <laughs> my kid is not getting kidnapped on my watch. <laughs> oh, my God, I got to talk to your mom about that. I can't wait for that one. Yeah. So uh, let, let's just contrast our parenting uh, styles. My my parents, I would be in uh, Cyprus, Greece for the national team, yeah. and I'd get home, and my mom would go, oh, what? You were in Greece? I've been telling all my friends you were in Cyprus, Florida this entire time. <laughs> Okay, and then another time, I was That's in so Bulgaria, and every parent was like, how was, Bo how was Bolivia? I was like, I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know. I didn't go. <laughs> I didn't go to Bolivia, Mom. I was in Bulgaria. That's so funny. She's like, wow, really? Oh, my God. I've been telling all these people this whole time you're in Bolivia. <laughs> So her name is Fruity Judy, Naomi, when you meet her. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh that's that's golly. That's so funny. Oh, that's good stuff, my man. are hurting. I'm laughing. Oh, golly. Oh. That's good. That's, that's good. good. Jules, do you want to ask about not how Naomi is way too smart to be on this podcast with us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smith's symbolic systems. Let's oh, hear about yes. this. Oh my yes. gosh. That was actually going to be my first question at first. I was like, we've got to talk symbolic <laughs> systems. Did you do symbolic systems? No. I want to know what it is. I did I did do um biology. I nice. was going to I was going to go to medical school. I just said to Lynn, God, I could have done you know, business school or journalism or something I'm actually doing. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, yeah, like something like relevant to it. Yeah. 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 Biology is hard. Yeah. Um, I stayed away from those. Yeah. I did, um, I did, yeah, symbolic systems. So it's like computer science, psychology, um, philosophy, and linguistics. Okay. That is fascinating. Wait, say it's that really again. Oh my gosh. Computer science, yeah. psychology, philosophy, and linguistics. What? And so there's like a core that you take that kind of has a mix of all of those. And then you can like pick a concentration and like go more in depth to what you like. But um, I didn't, I thought like it was going to be like too hard. And then there's been like, it was funny. Like there was one person in each class who decided to do it. So we all were like, we've got to recruit one. Like, and so oh, like really? Andy Sullivan did it. And then oh. Alana Cook and oh. then Sam Hyatt, Jojo Harbour, then me. And then I got one, Emily Chow. And then I think we lost the chain. But like, uh -huh. I, I, got, I got mine. So like, <laughs> Um, oh no yeah. way i didn't know it that was... that's where i've heard it before is from Soli. yeah yeah um, yeah so it was i don't know i, I was it was just really interesting to me because like i didn't really know what i wanted to do 
like going in, I didn't know what I wanted to like major in. And I thought like, oh great, I can do all four things. Like, and the way they come together is really interesting. Um, and I think like after I took my first computer science class, that's what I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Cause I like was really interested in that. Um, really liked those classes and like, I feel like it's one of the harder parts in the major. So I was like, okay, if I don't like this, I'm like, I'm not like, I'm not yeah. gonna yeah. like hate all of my classes going through college. Um, but yeah, it was really interesting. I really enjoyed it. It was it was hard, um, but I made it, you know? <laughs> well, and now you're doing a master's as well? Yeah, I'm doing a like master's. currently? Yeah. I am in one, I'm in one unit right now. So like, oh, still, <laughs> still, quarter, you're doing I'm it. keeping it alive. You know what? Like, it's <laughs> going towards the master's. Um, I did, so I wasn't sure if I wanted to take a fifth year or not. So I... And I knew I was going to be done with my undergrad early. So I like applied to it's management science and engineering. Um, so it's more like businessy. And, um, and then I decided to leave. I went to the draft and I was like, you know what? Like I can still do this. Um, so I oh took like, I would take like two or three classes. I think I did like last preseason. And once we started traveling, I was like, okay, this was like, not a good idea like I'm like tone it back a little and then I think like this year going to the world cup I was kind of like okay like you know like I I'll take one unit because like it's like I can do that like it's like easy but like I'm not going to take anything that's like hard I guess or like taking up too much time so I want to finish it like I'm like I'm yeah. like, I'm just like you know once I start it like I, I want to finish it and you like will. it's really interesting to me but like I feel like for a lot of college it was like okay how can I how can I fit maximize a quarter and like fit the most in I'm kind of taking it more as like when I have time I'll do yeah. it um, yeah it's yeah not, it's not my priority right now my priority is like soccer like yeah. that's what I'm doing um but like if I can if I have time for this I'll do it oh my gosh I cannot wait to see what this leads to eventually I know I hope it I mean, you I, have, I feel like you cool. could go like 700 different ways with it. I know. I'm like, really, I'm hoping I'm setting myself up to do like, and then I know I'm going to try to do all of them, which is like not going to work. But. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear you say something about AI in, in one podcast you were doing that, yeah. that, that was the focus of it as well. I was like, well, that's kind of top of mind for everyone right now. So, yeah. So we'll, mm. I'll see where it, I'll see where it takes me, but, um, I think because I didn't like know what I wanted to focus in, I was like, let's keep the options open. Let's like hit this from all angles and then I'll figure <laughs> it out later. <laughs> no, that's that's smart. So I think uh, it's, it is now officially time for some mm -hmm. competition. Ooh. All time right. Time for the Lynn game. Most important part, noisemakers for chiming in for the answer. Naomi, what have you got? I've got my keys. <laughs> Solid. Stanford lanyard. What do Jules? You oh, okay. I thought you were going to have a buzzer or something crazy. <laughs> you I, feel better about, I feel better about my keys. <laughs> I, I usually have a, a squeaky toy. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Swaggy has eaten them all, so she's destroyed them all. Thank you, Swaggy. Thank you. <laughs> you get the English red coin. Here's the deal, Naomi. You were about to go head to head with Julie in a game of trivia. Okay. All of the questions are multiple choice. There are five questions, best of five wins. Every game has a different theme. Okay. And the low hanging fruit would have been for me to do a game themed with Stanford. I did not go that route. Too easy, Instead, too obvious. <laughs> two, on, two on the nose, mm -hmm. been there, done that. So today's grab bag, which means it can be about anything. Oh, okay. did not expect that. Okay. Oh, really? You don't know the questions? I, I, actually, I actually don't, which kind of pisses me off that she doesn't just like leak them to me because I lose every game as you will find out, Naomi. I don't know. I feel like you might, I don't, I don't think trivia is my strong suit, but. And, and it's not for lack of trying because I get really <laughs> damn competitive. <laughs> this is the, so, this this is the only way I get out my competitive fire and I lose every Game. Just trying to well, work on my language your background in psychology might come into play here naomi because you were about to watch julie get in her own head yeah <laughs> i do that i do that too all right are we ready yeah, yeah. 
Wait, do we have to wait until after you finish all the choices? Great question. You do not. As soon as you think you know the oh, answer, you can go okay. in. And as I said, though, there it's multiple choice. So if you don't know the answer and you want to wait for them, and that's where Julie really starts to overthink. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the tips. <laughs> I might have a tendency to buzz in early and then not get it right. Okay. I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> so grab bag, random trivia. Question okay. one. How many songs did Rihanna sing during her Super Bowl performance? Oh. Was it A, 12, B, 14, or C, 17? Naomi. 12. Correct. Oh, come on! Yes! <laughs> oh, my so God. She up. actually did 12. I was like, there's um, no way it was 17. That's too many. Yeah. And she only had, she literally had like 20 minutes to do it. Yeah. Ah, okay. One zero <laughs> Naomi. And I was there. <laughs> you were there? Yeah. Oh my she God. Was, she was amazing. It was, I was like, glued. I was watching TV like it was, it was yeah, so good. It was so good. Yeah. Question two. Which American president appears on the $1 bill? Oh God. Is it A, That's Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> Are you looking for a dollar bill, Julie? Uh -huh. B, that. Thomas Jefferson, or C, George Washington? Julie. I, I don't know, but I'm going to say George. Correct. Uh, yes! Oh my gosh, I was literally going to say it's not George. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, one one. Oh, thank God! I didn't oh, want to go down on yeah. two, but I had to go in. I had to go in. Yeah, you. Okay. Question okay. three: Who was the most recent person to achieve EGOT status? That's when you win an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. I know that. I know this too. I actually heard this the other day. Was it A. Viola Davis, B. Tom Hanks, or C. Lady Gaga? Julie. Viola oh. Davis! Correct. Oh, that was easy. Come on. <laughs> oh my yes, god. I can actually win. Oh my gosh. I oh need god, to this after. is when I start working against myself. I get too excited. Shake, <laughs> shake after the first one. Shake after the first one. <laughs> I get too excited. Okay. Okay. Question four. Out of everyone, who has the mo like everyone in the world? Who has the most Instagram followers? Is it A, Beyonce, B, Messi, or C, Cristiano Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Naomi. Ronaldo. Cor correct. Oh, I need that. I need that. God. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. I can't okay. believe Ronaldo has more than Beyonce. That's screwed up. Or Messi. I know. And, even. like, Messi after the World yeah. Cup. Like, yeah. Come on. Yeah. 557 million followers. Oh, Ooh. my God. Okay, That'd here we go. Of... Question five. This could be it. Is this a tiebreaker? Yeah. This, yeah. If neither of you get this correct, then we'll go to a tiebreak. Now, me. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the current lead of The Bachelor? Oh, oh God. No. I have no, literally. Oh, I God. Even guess. Thank God you don't know either. I have no idea. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Oh, I need to go run and ask. Maybe my roommate would know. Don't be Googling it, Naomi. Do not. No, I'm not. My, my keep hands, your hands up. <laughs> keep your hands up. <laughs> Is I... it A, Zach Shalcross, B, Tyler Cameron, or C, Pete Davidson? Julie. Pete Davidson. It can't be him. He's the, the no, yeah, can't. comedian. Right? There could be two Pete Davidsons. Uh, I'm going to go with Zach. Correct. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> that was a terrible no, guess. I've never been so happy. Oh my gosh. I win I, on I, a Bachelor question of all questions. I hate that show ew. so much. I couldn't be paying attention when people were talking about it. <laughs> Me either. I'm like, oh God, I get in the other no room. Idea. I, I that you know, I feel better because I had literally no idea. Like, I you should feel good about yourself that you did. It was know. something I knew. I would have been like, oh, I messed up. But like, yeah. I was never getting that. <laughs> <laughs> the victory dance is out. 
<laughs> okay, Naomi, most pressing questions. Okay. Tell me something, anything that rattles you because you seem unrattleable. Like in life? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> on the soccer field in particular, oh, you just soccer... like, you're very, un- it's like nothing rattles you. You're like, eh, yeah, that's fine. I've got 700 people coming at me right now and it's okay. <laughs> Um, what rattles me on the field? Or off? On the field? Okay, this, it's not, it doesn't really have anything to do, like, with soccer, but, like, when my shorts have, like, the underwear liner in them, I think that's <laughs> the most uncomfortable thing ever. <laughs> when do you shirt... cut out the underwear? Yes, I cut yeah. out. Like, it's, oh. I, I just can't. It's, like, it's not comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but did you yeah, want to that's thing? another Gen Z thing because, like, when I used to cut out my liner, then yeah. the shorts just keep hiking up and up and up, and then it's like, um, you know, it's just like yeah. uncomfortable in another way, and it's like yeah. I don't want that either. Yeah, you gotta you gotta find a happy medium. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know this was a this was yeah, a thing. This is a soccer thing for sure. Yeah. Oh. Soccer girl okay. problems. Yeah. Soccer at soccer girl problems. <laughs> yeah. At soccer girl problems. Help us with the yeah. liners. Yeah. Okay. What about life? Let's see. I feel like I'm, like, not the most handy person. Like, our cabinet kind of, like, broke a little bit yesterday, and I was just, like, got to call someone. Like, (laughs) someone's got to come fix it. Like, I – because I obviously don't know how. (laughs) So I think, like, anything handy. Like, it's not – it's just not my thing. That's fair. All right. My most pressing is what is your pregame pump-up song? Um, Fight Night is a good one. I like Meg the Stallion. She usually gets people going. Who's DJing nowadays? Uh, Pino. Uh, Pino. Pino or, or Sonnet. Oh. All right. The last thing we do on the podcast, Naomi, is high, <laughs> low, cheer. So high of your career, low of your career, and the cheer is for someone who's helped you along the way. You can start with high. High? I think I'll do just high of college was winning Natty. Like that was like big. Mm. And I think like pro like getting my first cap was like a big one um and just like just feel like it was a big one that felt like like push the confidence like pushing myself in the right direction um Mm -hmm. so hopefully it's like not actually the high it's like the ramp like (laughs) just it's just the on ramp yeah yeah it's like the trampoline Um, yeah (laughs) it's a springboard um, yeah yeah exactly um probably the low of my career has been um I tore my ACL junior year of college, so yeah, I, I think that. I think like that's just like a hard time. So it's like when you're like, okay, like I'm starting to think of going pro and like what's gonna happen after, and like I just feel like I kind of just had to stop. Um, and it was during COVID, um, um, mm-hmm. but I just feel like it was like I don't know. I think it was a big moment for me, like kind of like just making it so clear to myself, like this is actually what I want to do and it's not just because like I'm good and like it's like Mm -hmm. the path it's like no like I want this and like I want to get back and like be even better and like I think it made me so much better Mm. Um, interesting like I feel like I just like I was faster I was like mentally I just like I don't know I just think it was like a reset for me Mm -hmm. um and You hear that a lot with people with injuries and I think it's a good reminder to young kids who get so frustrated by it or even adults who you know get frustrated by it that it it can be a chance to actually reset and come out of it better stronger brighter yeah I was like heartbroken like when I found Mm -hmm. out like sure I think it like during that time like actually a lot of things like happened for me like just like with school or like things outside of soccer um and like I think I was just like so like just like looking at it as like oh this sucks like this just like I can't Mm -hmm. believe this happened like yeah, I think it was like a big like learning moment for me. Mm. And then your cheer is for someone you were grateful for who's helped you along the way. Okay, I'm gonna go with my mom. Mm. Not very much help on the field, <laughs> but um, she like I feel like we like she drove me to like every soccer mm. tournament we have. Like we like she literally bought this Toyota Camry like. And I think she, like, I was born in 2000, so I think she bought it the year I was born. And, like, mm. we, like it took me through my whole, like, we had Aww. it for, like, 
18 years, I think, or 19 years. And it took us like all over California. Um, and she's just like, I feel like she's just been such a rock star with it. And like, just like loves, she just loved coming to everything. And now she like will come down to San Diego all the time. And like, she's like, wants to come and watch. Like she came to Dallas for the game um, for She Believes. So I think it's like, it's just been fun. Like, I feel like me and her have been like on this journey together. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's like taking me to like playing for the national team. And she, she'll be like, I can't believe we made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, we'll be going to a tournament. She goes, okay, we, we just got to take it one game at a time. I'm like, <laughs> okay, yep. Like, <laughs> And it's like so uh, funny because like like it's like she's such a big like part of it and she feels it too. Like she's like, oh, I can't believe we lost. And I'm like, I know. Like <laughs> um, But yeah, so I think that That's it would so be my cute. mom. And yeah. she kept you from being kidnapped. Most yeah, importantly. And she ultimately she let me go to my first U14 yeah. camp. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I still wasn't allowed to have sleepovers. I was like, this isn't making sense. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so good. So good. Moms always need a big hug for all yeah. that they do yeah. behind the scenes, in front of the scenes. Oh, I love that. It's a we. It is always a we. Yeah. Well, I will tell you that watching you come in and crush it as you have has been such a joy. And to see the calmness and grace in which you do it, Naomi, in class, um, and, you know, to echo Rapino's quote of uh, you just don't see people do that at this level so um i'm really really psyched for you and all that you're achieving and i know as you said it's just a little <laughs> springboard yeah just scratching the surface <laughs> thank uh. you that means a lot to me thank you what a young stud she is 22 <laughs> years old oh Wow. So impressive. Uh, my takeaway, Lynn, is that I felt it was a good reminder when you follow your passion and you surround yourself with good people, good things often follow. She had the friend that said, come on, you should play. Got her into club. The coach that said, come on, you should try this team so you can be further seen. The Ethiopian community that said, come one, come all, small, medium, or large every Saturday. <laughs> and um, and she just kept saying, I just, you know, the fact that she stayed with her club that entire, what, 10 years is so unusual. Mm. So nice to hear. Love it. So I have several takeaways first two are, oh, are quick i can't even tell you how satisfying it was that you won the lynn game on a bachelor question <laughs> like, i don't know I, that should count as like five wins i just I've won the season because of that it just seems like a culmination for me not for you but of me that because i know how much you cannot stay on the show so the fact that you won on a bachelor question mm-hmm I feel like that was just, mm -hmm. that was an accomplishment. Yeah. I get a gold star. Speaking of gold stars, Fruity Judy, oh my goodness. I mean, <laughs> I don't know that I've laughed that hard ever on the podcast of you, well, <laughs> me and Ham, split pan story, uh, of you telling Fruity Judy stories. Oh, Fruity Judy. She's a gem, that one. They go on for days. I was going to say, that might need to be a recurring Had segment. I never tell, have I tell, have I never told that story? Not that story. I've... I don't think I've ever heard that story, period. Even really? Na yeah, even Naomi was like, she even said in the episode that her cheeks were hurting because she was laughing so much. <laughs> so. Mmm, Judes. I told her she made the episode. She goes, what did you say about me? I said, well, mom, you're gonna have to listen. I cannot tell you, I'd have to kill you and I love you too much. <laughs> Top secret. Okay, now to the actual, you know, uh, content of of the uh, of the interview. Oh, I would just thought it was such a mic drop moment when Naomi said how veteran players were teaching her that you are demanding what you deserve. I mean, can mm -hmm. we just get that on a billboard? Or I don't know how mm -hmm. how do we blast that out to everyone? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had someone, well, it was Billie Jean King who told me that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have an older veteran. I thought of that after the episode, that that was the origin of it. Billie Jean King saying, don't settle, yeah. don't settle for the crumb. Yeah. Or you like, have the you power. You deserve this. Yeah. Yeah, you deserve this. Go get it. Yeah. I would just think that had to be so cool for you to even hear that. Just that, how all these generations later, and it's really now mm -hmm. that's the standard. Yeah, because we so wanted to pass on that baton to Abby or to Alex or to Carly, whoever it was beyond behind us, you know, of mm -hmm. this is important. Make sure you pass this on to the younger gen generation. Hmm. And so to hear that, I was like, oh, yeah, it definitely always feels like a full circle moment. It's very maternal. Yeah. Questions permitted, Len. What do we got in the grab bag this week? So next week, next episode marks our 100th episode. Can you please share with the Dope Village what our plans are for it? Well, we decided that the 100th episode should be something that we haven't done in a very long time. And that is grab all the 99ers that we can and have a happy hour. <laughs> Reunion. <laughs> Hump day, hump day, hump day. Wednesday is hump day. 100th episode is going to be a hump day episode of a happy hour reunion with the 99ers. You never know what you're going to get. And I can guarantee you it ain't going to be very clean sometimes. We might have to bleep it. I apologize in advance. No, um, these are, um, these are, as as we know, very funny women that uh, we, we just don't, I mean, we see each other at Angel City Games, but that's not everyone. We text a lot together, but we don't like visually see each other. I don't think we've ever done a Zoom like this. Oh, wow. So I am super pumped and I'm getting a good response. Nice. A lot of people can do it. So I think people should start sending their questions in, right? So what do you think? Here's the deal. I have really big news to report. I created oh, breaking news. a laughter permitted email so that mm. our dope village can send in wow. questions and really specifically we'll start off with questions for the 99er so the wow. email is laughter permitted at gmail.com <laughs> again we are that is yes. laughter permitted at gmail.com we are so <laughs> Sophisticated oh, and we're, fancy. We're getting legitimized. We have, we've got a Gmail. <laughs> so along with a Gmail, I'll definitely make a social tile that Julie will put up on her uh, Instagram, Twitter. If anyone knows how to DM, feel free to DM me on, on Instagram. I'm not, I don't DM a lot, but I can keep an eye out. So just please feel free to, to hit us up any way possible. And the question being... What question do you have for the 99ers? Let us know. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait. Episode 100. I know. In the meantime, please leave a comment on our Apple podcast page because we really do enjoy reading them. And why not rate and subscribe to the podcast because it makes a huge difference and shows that, yes, we have people paying attention, and this space matters. All these awesome women, the stories need to be heard. And be sure to, f to share your favorite episode with a member, or I don't know, maybe 500 members of your dope village. Thank you, as always, to Ally and Dick Sporting Goods for their support, and of course, to Kate Diaz for our awesome theme music. And remember, as always, kids, sing it with us. Laughter permitted. You're demanding what you deserve.